So you and your significant other go to a party. All is well until you look across the room and you notice that your significant other seems awfully chummy with someone else. Someone who might make you feel a little threatened. Maybe it's someone of the opposite sex or same sex, whatever y'all are into. And you feel a little jealous. You try not to because you're not jealous by nature maybe. But you look and you just feel like that just doesn't seem right. You know better than to confront the person during the party because you've tried that before and never goes well for you. So when you get home, you decide to go ahead and confront him. Of course, they say to you, stop being so jealous and insecure. You're so controlling. I'm my own person, and if you don't like it, you shouldn't have acted like that in the first place. You're confused, and after arguing all night, because of course that's what the narcissist wants you to do, you end up begging for forgiveness and apologizing for the trouble. Sound familiar? If so, this video's for you. We're going to talk about why narcissists want to make you jealous and how you can handle that. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Sound good? If so, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. In a study that was done by Gregory Tortoriello, a psychologist from the University of Alabama, they tested narcissists to find out why they want to make you jealous. The study author says, yeah, look, there's some normal stuff about narcissists. He says they do pursue goals just like everybody else. He says, we're just finding that in these situations in romantic relationships, it's to a slightly greater degree and it includes shocking stuff. So this guy and his fellow authors were like, well, we're really interested in this because we found out that in other research, it showed that narcissists were commonly sabotaging their relationships. They used behaviors such as flirting with other people in order to ruin their relationships. And the researchers then theorized, okay, well, these behaviors are impulsive and the narcissist can't help themselves. However, Tortoriello and his colleagues decided that, you know what, there's something else to this. They must be doing it on purpose. What they found was fascinating. So anyone who spent any significant amount of time around a narcissist is probably aware that oftentimes these types of people want desperately for you to be jealous of any and everything they can make you jealous about. They provoke jealousy by talking about how attractive other people are or making little comments about how it would be fun to date this person or that person or worse. Commenting on how you compare what your shortcomings are compared to the other person. For example, one of my clients said to me that his wife would talk about how much more money this other guy made than him and how much better her life would be had she married this other guy. It's really messed up, right? And that's just one of many terrible examples I could tell you about. Since we know that narcissists tend to be very insecure people by nature, it doesn't seem to make sense that they would do anything to try to threaten their romantic relationships. But we all know that's not the case with these guys, right? Or girls. So some researchers earlier this year decided that they were going to figure out exactly why that was. I find this so fascinating. So the first thing the researchers point out is that A, there are two types of narcissism, which we know. There's the grandiose and then there's the vulnerable type, right? So just as a quick refresher, the grandiose type tends to be confident and outgoing and seems to not have a whole lot of anxiety when it comes to social stuff. And most people would be able to see a grandiose type and go, hmm, that person's a little bit arrogant or that person's a narcissist. But the vulnerable narcissist, as we all know, is just a little harder to detect. They kind of come across a little bit shy. They might be quiet. They might have social anxiety. They tend to act like they're a little better than people. They, they seem all irritated and annoyed with everybody in the world sometimes. They act like they're better than people, even though they secretly or publicly hate themselves. But either way, whether you're talking about a grandiose narcissist or a vulnerable narcissist, the researchers say that both grandiose and vulnerable narcissists are commonly doing things that destroy their relationships. And I think we all know that, right? That's, <laughs> that's not news to us, is it? So in the study, the researchers pointed out certain examples of behaviors that they were looking for and, and digging into. And you probably might recognize these behaviors as I explain them to you. One of them was that narcissists tend to act distant and uninterested when they are in a committed relationship once you get past the love bombing phase, right? They tend to form platonic relationships, platonic relationships, 
with people of the opposite sex or same sex, whatever y'all are into. And then they act like, hey, this shouldn't bother you. And, and if you act upset or jealous, they go off and they tell you, oh, you're crazy. How could you be like that? What's going on with you? What's wrong with you? They might say that if you think I'm cheating, maybe I really will start cheating. I should just do it if you think I'm doing it anyway, right? Or they may say, maybe we shouldn't be together. Maybe I should dump you since you can't let me have my friends. They may choose to pick up on everything about you that they don't like and start talking about it and how much better this other person is about it. They may just brazenly, blatantly flirt and just be like, too freaking bad deal with it. Bottom line, narcissists are known to do things that hurt you, make you feel insecure, and make you jealous. And then they blame you and they call you crazy when you overreact or when you react like a normal healthy person would react. They tell you you're crazy. They start picking, picking, picking. You're always pulling me apart. You're always you're always judging me. You're always investigating me. Everything's terrible. La la la. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Do you? Let me know in the comments. What kind of crap have you heard like that? All right, moving right along. So the study authors wanted to find out exactly what made narcissists want to make people jealous. They used the five motives for inducing romantic jealousy. Scale. <laughs> and they tested the people in the study who were narcissists with a rating tool, which is actually called the MIRJS or the Motives for Inducing Romantic Jealousy Scale. I find this so interesting. So after they had already determined that these people were narcissists, they used this test. So the five motives identified are as follows. The first one is power and control. The motive is power and control. And the idea is, uh, the, the description according to the MIRJS is exerting one's power over the partner to gain leverage. And a sample would be, I want to gain power over my partner. Revenge, according to the MIRJS, is retaliating due to partner inducing jealousy in him or her. So they're retaliating against you because you made them jealous. And the sentence that goes with that then is, I want to get revenge because my partner made me jealous. The other ones are testing or strengthening the relationship. And that is officially defined as increasing relational closeness by testing the relationship. And the sentence that's included with that one is, I want to test my partner's love for me. Security is the next one. Increasing relational closeness by testing the relationship is that motive. I want to test my partner's love for me is what the narcissist would say. And finally, compensatory self-esteem. Needing relationship or partner for approval. I want assurance that my relationship is strong, the narcissist would say, or I feel inadequate. So the study involved 237 students, undergrad students, and they also completed various other measures of the NPI narcissistic personality inventory, which by the way, you can get at queenbeing.com if you want to check that out. The pathological narcissism inventory, another one, and the Mach 4, also known as Machiavellianism. Is that how you say that? Anyway, and the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. And this was in addition to completing the romantic jealousy induction scale. So researchers were able to measure the various correlations among various aspects of narcissism, you know, and the motives to make the partners jealous. So what the researchers found was really interesting. So grandiose narcissists, or the more out there overt narcissists. They're more likely to try to make you jealous in order to achieve a certain goal. So they'll kind of pre-plan this stuff. They decide in advance what they're going to do. They plan it out and they do it. They execute the plan, right? This is what's really interesting is that the vulnerable narcissist, the one that you least expect, they're motivated by a whole other thing. They're motivated by power and control motives and insecurity. Interestingly though, what I find, I find this fascinating. The grandiose narcissists had a lower tendency, less of a tendency to use jealousy to help them feel better about themselves. So they're not so concerned about the low self-esteem issue when it comes to this stuff. They were more likely, the overt or grandiose narcissists, were more likely to use jealousy and other tactics in order to make relationship goals happen. So they wanted to test the relationship, they wanted to strengthen the relationship, etc. They wanted to see how you would react. Although vulnerable narcissists, again, were more likely to do it in an unplanned way and on an emotionally driven level. So the overt narcissist is more likely to make you, to do it on purpose, to mean it, to do it just to test you or just to test the relationship or to get some goal met. They're, they're more sneaky about it. They, they plan ahead. They're kind of evil that way. Whereas the covert or the vulnerable narcissist is going to be less likely to sneak around they're just going to do it out of pure emotion. They're going to do it because they feel insecure or they feel jealous or they feel upset about something. You understand? To gain power. So if you've watched my videos on psychopathy or you've seen 
what other people have said about what a psychopath is, then you know that a psychopath is more likely to be an overt narcissist or a grandiose type. Yeah, and even in this study, they noticed that more psychopaths are grandiose narcissists than vulnerable types. So while grandiose narcissists are more likely to try to take revenge against you for hurting them or doing something to them, they're less likely to do that with using jealousy. For these people, you're gonna, the grandiose type's gonna dig into the emotional abuse or the physical abuse in order to take, or violence of some sort usually, in order to take revenge. Whereas with the vulnerable narcissist, again, it's all about the insecurity. It's all about the emotions that lead them to that moment because they get defensive and they go on the offense and their responses are straight out of emotional distress. So now that we understand why they do it, let's talk about how we can get through it and get past it. So what is jealousy? Well, basically jealousy is a reaction, an emotional one, to something that has happened to us in the past. It's a reaction to some sort of a past wound. Ultimately, without going into a bunch of detail, most of us, most humans, in fact, have a certain fear of being abandoned, being left by someone we love or care about. And that wound becomes triggered when something happens that reminds us of what hurt us before. So maybe it's just as simple as your parents got divorced when you were a child. Or maybe it's as simple as someone cheated on you in the past or someone abandoned you in the past and you were very hurt by that. Regardless of what the wound is, that's why we become jealous so quickly sometimes. But the narcissist plays on this and exacerbates it, whether they meant to or not, as we just discussed. Depending on the type of narcissist they are. The wound, the fear, it has all become a part of us. It surfaces every time the narcissist tries to make us jealous. It's not helpful. It starts to control us. So now this is a controlling factor in our lives and it's not helpful. So what do we do about it? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I spent a long time feeling very, very jealous for no good reason, but it didn't matter. The wounds aren't important anymore. The situation isn't important anymore. But I recall being so jealous that I couldn't function at some times and it was directly as a result of the way I had been treated in the past. So how do we heal the wounds? How do we overcome the jealousy? How do we get past this mess? Well, we have to understand, first of all, that jealousy works as a control tactic because it taps into those wounds. It works because we aren't really aware that it's happening in the first place. And if we don't look deeper into what happens, it becomes an unseen power over us. So the first step to fixing jealousy is to recognize it, to be aware of it. Recognize when you've been jealous. Don't look away. Nobody wants to acknowledge the parts of us that we aren't that proud of, right? Because then we would have to admit that we're not always perfect. We know we're not perfect, don't we? But it's important because if we can't recognize it, it continues to maintain power over us. So recognize it. Take the time to acknowledge it. But yourself become scared, anxious, afraid of abandonment angry at other people who threaten you, angry at the people they're flirting with, angry at them for flirting, angry at them for not thinking you're just enough and not being so into you that they don't care about other people. Listen, it's understandable that you would be hurt when someone violates your trust. It's justified, especially in this case. But you also have to know that it's not your fault. The narcissist does what they do for their own reasons that are often unrelated to you directly. They would do this if they were with you or with some other famous model who's so sexy that everybody can't stand it or whatever. It doesn't matter who, who they're with. It's not about you particularly. It's always about them and their own issues. As you begin to heal, you must grow. So I'm going to give you some tips real quick. Number one, try not to act on the jealousy. Remember that the narcissist is seeking supply. And if you act jealous and upset, they like that. Even if they threaten you and they complain at you and they yell at you and they say, you're so controlling. Why aren't you more secure on yourself? La 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 la. It doesn't matter. They're doing it for supply. They like it when you feel jealous. They do. Even if they protest otherwise, they do. When you recognize it, pause, watch the fear, watch the urges of jealousy, watch the urge to act on it. Just let it be what it is. Don't allow the jealousy to take over. Don't let it rule your actions. And if you need to, step away and take some time to deal. Number two, imagine your better self. Imagine who you want to be. Do you like to be jealous? Or would you rather be so secure and confident that nothing affects you like that? Imagine your better self and then act accordingly. Number three, let go of the suffering. When you act in jealousy, it will hurt you. And it may hurt other people who the narcissist is involving in the situation. It doesn't feel good to you. So you have to see 
that you're causing yourself to hurt and you're causing the other person to hurt, you're causing suffering. You don't want to live like that. It's caused because you're scared and that's understandable. But if you try to act with compassion toward yourself and toward the victim that the narcissist is using against you, it's going to change things for the better. So react with compassion for yourself and the other person and let go of the fear. Number four, let go of your attachment to the narcissist. It's understandable. That's your person. Even if they're a jerk, it's your jerk, right? But holding on to them is hurting yourself. So practice letting go. If you hope to leave the narcissist in the future anyway, it might be easier for you to imagine letting go of them as you go forward. It does get easier as you practice. And finally, number five, in a healthy relationship, I would tell you to be less self-centered and more focused on what's really happening in this situation. But in this toxic environment, I'm going to tell you to be a little more self-centered because the fact is that as much as we would like to believe that we're in a healthy, normal relationship, we're not. We were, I was, you are, or were in a relationship with someone who is toxic, someone who will intentionally hurt you without thought, without consideration for your feelings. So you need to be a little more self-centered. And I'm going to tell you right now, the best thing you can do, if someone attempts to induce jealousy in you on purpose or otherwise, the best thing you can do is turn around and walk away from that situation when you're talking about a toxic narcissist. Using jealousy as a tool to hurt you or control you or test you is unacceptable in a relationship. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Recognize that the narcissist may be doing this out of insecurity or they may be doing it intentionally to hurt you. In either case, it's not your problem and you can let go of it by recognizing that this person is not on your team and they never will be. As you move forward, you want to understand that, that you will want to not be jealous of people in general. You don't want to be jealous of people for their success or for their happy marriages or anything like that. You want to be happy for them because then you draw more of that to yourself. In that case, it's a whole other ball of wax. We're just talking about relationship jealousy right now. Jealousy isn't something we can just let go of. It is pervasive. It sneaks up and in and takes over our souls. But it's a wound that needs healing, a hurt that requires our compassion for ourselves. It helps us to move beyond jealousy if we heal ourselves. It's something that we learn with practice. It's something that we learn with learning to love ourselves. If you'd like me to go into better details on how to handle the jealousy, leave me a comment below and let me know. And now it's time for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you experienced jealousy in a relationship with a narcissist? And if you have, how'd it go for you? Tell me your story. Tell me what happened to you. Tell me about your experiences and tell me how you dealt with it. And if you haven't experienced jealousy, tell me why not. Tell me, was it just that you were so secure in yourself it didn't bother you? Or was it something else? Let me know. Share your thoughts and your comments below and let's talk about it. All right. That's all I've got here right now. Thanks so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.